Hello, hello, Stitchy friends. It's Kat from Kat Kinder Lily here again, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today is another floss tube video, and I have lots going on. Now, I also need to apologise that I know I said I would try and do a bit of a house tour and show you some of my finished pieces that are up and around my house, and I absolutely will be doing that, but I'm not going to do it today because it's been a little while since I showed you any whips and progress. So I really want to show you where I'm up to with that and I promise I will be doing the house tour on the next video. So I have three main whips that I've been working on to show you the progress. I have two new starts and I have two projects ready to start but not actually started yet and you might know what those are, or at least one of them, if you've seen any of the other videos. And I have one finish, I guess maybe two if you count. Since I did my last whip update and progress, I have finished the enormous heaven and earth designs, but I've done a whole video all about that already, so I'm not sure if that still counts as a finish because I kind of counted it as a finish then, so. But I do have another finish as well to share, so that's exciting. So I have no new stash. Actually, that's a lie because I, I guess technically I had to buy a lot of threads for the new projects. And actually I have a new piece of fabric which I am going to show you. So I guess I sort of do have a little bit of new stash. And I bought a cross stitch related, but not actually cross stitch item. I bought, actually I bought a uh, tablet case, which has been very helpful because I can stand up my tablet and that is amazing for watching floss tube videos. Since I've discovered floss tubes, I've been making my own ones obviously and I've been finding lots of other fantastic floss tubers out there, far too many than I can really watch. But yeah, I kind of needed something to stand my tablet up and I didn't have it, so I'm quite excited to get that. But okay, let's get on to the stitchy stuff. So the first project I have to show you is in the Christmas bag. So it must be the Christmas project. And yes, this is Christmas Friends by Doreen Jones. And I'm just working this on white 16 count Ada, all the called for DMC flosses. And I will pop a picture up so you can see where I was last time. And here we are. This is where I'm up to at the moment. Let's see if that's, oh yeah, you can just, uh, there we go, got him all in there. And you can see, if I put that back up, yeah, I've got a little tiny bit of the hat, you can see just there, and then this all up here, that's all blue. So I think I had a quick look and I think there's about 4,000-ish stitches of blue to do along that, that top section. So it's not going to be the most interesting to stitch. And I did wonder if I could have just stitched the whole thing on pale blue, but actually I think I wouldn't because if you look on here, there's some sort of shading around him that I, I think it wouldn't have looked as good. So yes, I know it's a lot of blue stitches, but it's going to look better this way. And there's back stitching lettering to go on top of that. So I think that's going to look nicer on the stitching as well. And talking of the back stitch, I think that's what I'm going to do to break it up a little bit is to do some of the blue and then do some of the back stitch. So I can kind of mix and match between that. Now, I think I've made quite good progress since the last time. And if you remember, I decided this was going to be my football project. So it's the one I'm stitching where never the football's on. So we've had a few matches and I have actually made quite good progress during those. I guess because stitching just rows of blue, actually it's quite, it's quite quick. So there is that. Now I did also check, because I wanted to finish this for Christmas, that there were going to be enough football matches that given the number of stitches I can generally do during a football match, was I actually going to finish it in time? Because otherwise I might need to do a bit more on it. But actually it should be fine. I think with the number of football matches going on and the rate that I'm stitching, I worked out very roughly, I should finish it about November time. So that would be absolutely perfect. And if it gets close to Christmas and it looks like I'm not gonna make it, then I'll just put in some extra sessions on it and try and get it finished. Project number two is 
in my Caterpillar cross stitch bag. And this one is my Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Stitch Along, the Castle Homecoming. And I, again, I'll pop a picture up for you. I had just about finished part three, I think. We've had part four out. Now, I thought, I'm gonna show you this bit first. I thought this, this was part three with the little dragon and the knight. And I thought it couldn't get much cuter than that. But part four is this bit down here. And I will show you. Let's see, that, oh my goodness, it's a tiny little sea monster and a little frog prince. Oh my goodness, how adorable is that? <laughs> Isn't that just the cutest? So yeah, absolutely chock full of cuteness this. I cannot wait to see what the next part is, which I guess is the joy of a stitch along. And actually as I am recording this on a Sunday, but it won't be out until Wednesday, but the next part drops on Thursday. So uh, I'm very excited to see what's coming up next. Um, yeah, that's very cool. I'm really enjoying stitching this. I, it's a lot of fun to stitch the really cute characters. I will say, I think the, the fabric, this is a, um, it's a hand dyed fabric. And I, I don't know if you can see on here, if I sort of do that, you can see it's really, really soft. And I stitch in hand. And honestly, I'm actually having a little bit of a hard time stitching on this one. Um, I am hoping that once it's all finished and washed and pressed, I think it'll be all right anyway. But yeah, it's actually quite hard to stitch on. I'm not gonna go to a hoop though, because I really hate using hoops. Maybe one day, I keep trying them um, and maybe it would help, but I also don't want to switch in the middle of a project because I think that would muck the tension up too much. So I'm, I'm not gonna try a hoop. Don't tell me to use a hoop. Um, but yeah, the fabric's gorgeous anyway. So I, I'm still happy with it. It's um, gonna look really nice. And my third whip to share with you is not in an exciting project bag, just a, a Ziploc, but the project is exciting, or at least the colors are exciting. I am loving this. This is of course my chameleon. Again, I'll put a picture up so you can see what I've done. And actually, I'm gonna try and get him all in that. I've done quite a lot, I think. I think he really only had his eye and up to his mouth. So I've done all of that section below. So yeah, that's amazing. He is, oh, he is absolutely, again, so much fun to work on because of the bright colors. I will say, I think the, the difficulty with this one is, if you can see, because you've got all these little bits and there's all these small, small sections to work, and because I don't like to work cross country, I like to work the next bit as it comes and try not to leave any gaps. So it means I'm working quite small sections often um, and starting and finishing threads, but I don't mind that too much. It's not too bad. And actually, here you go, I will show you the back. That's the back. You see. And it's not too bad. It's not too bad considering that I'm starting and stopping threads quite a lot. It, it's still not too untidy, so I'm I'm happy with that. And I'm not one of these people who get super precious about the backs anyway. I do like it to be fairly neat, but I am not gonna get myself tangled up about it basically. So yeah, I am very happy with that one. Okay, so now I'm on to new starts. And as I said, I have two of those. And the first new start is also my finish because I wanted a project that I could take away. I've had the last week off on holiday, which has been delightful. And my husband, Tim, and I went away for a few days. So I thought it'd be nice to start a project. I do love a new project to take away uh, on holiday. We just went away in the UK. We went to Stow, in the, Stow on the World for a few days and it was absolutely lovely. It was really hot. It's been really warm here in the UK for about a week or so and it was really warm while we were away, but that meant there was a nice bit of sitting around in beer gardens with a gin and tonic and some stitchy time. So I guess I couldn't really complain about that. So yeah, I made really good progress. Um, and I, it's one I've shown you in a previous video that I wanted to start, pattern by Cubicle Cross Stitches. And I can show you now because it, say, it's all finished. So 
there you go. And I said before, I think this is quite appropriate for my husband. I think it's probably quite appropriate for me too, to be perfectly honest. But I mean, I just love those rainbow colors. It's, it was really nice to stitch, just those blocks of colors. It was a perfect holiday project for when I didn't want anything super complicated. And I had done almost all the rainbow by the time I came back from holiday. And I've just, um, so we were away for about four days and then came home and I finished off the, um, the back stitch, the text. And I will say, honestly, that's actually, that's always my least favorite bit. I don't mind back stitch, but back stitch lettering, oh, my brain, I don't make a huge number of mistakes, but back stitch lettering, oh my goodness, I made several mistakes. And I did actually end up tweaking the spacing of a few of the letters on the um, on there as well. But yeah, anyway, it's a fabulous pattern and it's finished, so yay. And yeah, I will link the pattern down in the description for you if you'd like to go and stitch that um, from Cubicle Cross Stitches. Now the other new start is one of my designs, yay. So it's a new one that I'm test stitching and Honestly, my creative mojo has been a little bit lacking of late, I have to admit. But with Halloween coming up, I actually really like designing and stitching for Halloween. So I, it really kind of got my creative juices flowing and I decided to create a new, new Halloween design. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a little sneaky peek, but you're going to get a much bigger one now. And so these are lovely Halloween flosses that I've been using. So these are all DMCs and it's kind of got your classic colours but I mean I threw a bit of pink in there as well because me and pink well it's kind of a given really. And the other thing is I think I need some Halloween needle minders because look I won't show you too much of the pattern on here but oh, I've got a Christmas needle minder on here. What I don't know what that's about. It was just the one I had to hand. So I need some Halloween needle minders and project bags, to be honest, as well. But let me show you the design where it is now. That is where I'm at. We have pumpkins. Love a pumpkin. Real life and stitch. And we've got a little cauldron going on there and some lettering. Kind of just says, ooh, at the moment. So. Yes, there will be another letter in front. Can you guess what that is? Now, the colour palette for this one, I basically picked it from the Halloween house that I did last year. And in fact, I'll show you the Halloween house. Here's the Halloween house that I stitched. Oh, I've kind of got a dangly thread on here. Here's the Halloween house that I stitched. So that was one of my, that's my design from last year. And I love the colour palette so much, I just used it for this one, but I did add in the pink. And I'll show you this one. I have actually, look at this. It's actually all put together and laced on the back. I haven't covered the back. I tend not to cover the back of my hoops because unless it's gonna be seen, it's honestly not worth it. But I do like this lacing approach. Um, I think it makes the fabric lie a bit flatter on the back. Um, I don't think there's a good way to show you. If I put it sideways, can you see? Yeah, if I do that, you can see it, it is quite flat. And I find sometimes when you do the sewing around the edge and pull it in, it kind of pops up quite a bit. So yeah, I quite like that method. Let me know if you want to see how I did that. So yeah, that's my Halloween pattern and it's coming along so fast because I am absolutely loving it, really enjoying stitching it. The colors are just so pretty. Um, so yeah, you'll probably see some more sneak peeks on Instagram. So if you are not already following me on Instagram, then do that. And you will obviously be the first to know when the release is happening as well, which hopefully will be very soon. And if you really want the best place to be, then I will say get on my email list. There is a link in the description. And I think I will probably be doing some kind of spooky savings special offer when I launch this probably with the other Halloween patterns as well. So if you've had your eye on anything, then get my email list and yeah, there's gonna be a discount coming up soon. If you're watching this in the future, then that's probably not gonna help you, but check the patterns out anyway. You might find something you enjoy. Okay, 
We are on to my two new projects that are ready to be started. And one of them, if you saw my video all about the Heaven and Earth Designs project that I finished, you will have seen the one that I was intending to do next. Um, but I will pop a picture up for you. It is the Chromatic Dragon, charted by Pain Free Crafts. Artwork is by Mikey Bergman. And I am so excited to start this, but I also sort of, I don't know, I think I've been procrastinating a little bit on it. Well, I did have to get all the threads and the fabric and everything. So obviously that takes a bit of time to actually get this size of project all together. So the fabric I've gone with the pretty standard 25 count even weave. When I stitched my last huge project, I stitched it on white. And this time around, all I've done is I've just picked antique white. Now, the reason for that is because you can see from the picture that there's quite a lot of dark. And I was worried about that showing through because I do stitch one over one. I tried two over one, so two strands, and it, the stitches were so bulky, it was not very nice to stitch. So on 25 count, I stitched with one strand. And I was worried that with a lot of dark colors, you'd get a lot of show through but I wasn't gonna stitch it on dark fabric. I did think about it, but I think that would be a bit of a nightmare. And then the light colors also, you might see the dark fabric through. So to be honest, I thought I will stick with light colored, but I did go antique white instead of white because I thought it would be just not quite so bright if it was showing through. So I don't know, we'll, we'll see when I start it, how that goes. There's some dark to start with, so I'm going to see very early on how that's gonna go. And I got, I have to show you this box, because this, oh my goodness, you can hear everything clunking around in there. This is an amazing Hotel Chocolat box. And no, I did not eat all the chocolates in here. I had a couple, but this was actually from someone, um, I work in hospital and a um, patient sent in some chocolates. And once they were all eaten, I said, please, could I have the box? Because it's absolutely perfect. So unfortunately, it is a little bit, it does fall apart a little bit, but it's got a little drawer at the bottom. I'm going to put it down here and open. Because it's a little bit stiff, but can you see, I've got a little drawer at the bottom here. So I've put in here, I've put the, this is the extra skeins that I'm going to need. I've got some needles. I've got my scissors in there as well. And then in the top, I've got, all the threads so I'll show you those so this is all the threads wow look at that it's absolutely crazy so these are all these are all DMC threads there's 70 colors there were 90 in the last enormous project I did so it's a few less colors um, and I, I was able to pull quite a lot from my stash. What was really helpful is that on the thread list, it tells you the number of stitches for each color, which was brilliant because I know how many stitches, when I'm stitching one over one on 25 count, I know how many stitches I can get out of each one meter length and therefore how many I can get out of an entire skein. So that was really helpful because if it wasn't a huge number of stitches, I knew I could just pull a few bits from my stash and pop them uh, in the project but if it was um, a skein or more than one skein then I just ordered new because what you really don't want with something like this is to have to buy extra stuff as you go down the line and find that the dye lots have changed slightly and it doesn't match up that's that's really frustrating so I did try and make sure that I have got everything there ready but some of the colors I mean some of the colors all I need is sort of you know a, a one meter length and that's all so that did cut down the number of threads, but obviously it's still quite a few to buy plus the fabric. So yeah, there's a bit of an expense in doing these projects, but it'll be worth it. Oh, and while I am talking about threads, I will say someone asked me about suppliers and what have you, um, and I will try and remember to link in the description below places that I've bought things from, patterns or supplies, whatever. I will say I ordered all my threads for this one and for the other project that I'm going to show you from Lakeside Needlecraft. Um, obviously they're here in the UK and I seriously highly recommend them 
because their customer service is absolutely fantastic. If I've ever had a query with anything, they have just helped me out so quickly. Um, everything gets shipped out fairly fast. I mean, it's not super quick, but honestly, that's just the post these days. Um, so to be honest, I don't think it's anything to do with Lakeside Needlecraft. Uh, I think our postal service is just kind of slow. But yeah, they are fantastic. So definitely recommend, I will link them in the description. And the other thing I've done to get ready for this project is that I've downloaded the PDF onto Pattern Keeper because that's what I used again when I stitched the Heaven and Earth designs to keep track of everything and I couldn't have attempted it without that. So I've downloaded it onto Pattern Keeper. But I have also um, got a different app that I've been hearing about called Markup RXP. And I've downloaded that, it's got a 14 day free trial. So I'm going to give it a go. My one thought so far is that the symbols on the pattern are much clearer in Pattern Keeper than they are in Markup RXP. But I don't think that's gonna make any difference in practice, but I, I will report back. And my other project that's ready to start that I've got everything for is this one here. So this is the Bella Filipina kit. This is one of the mermaids, this is Rossa. And this will be my first Bella Filipina, so my first experience with all the beading and what have you. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's not one of the hugest designs. Some of them are really quite big. This one isn't too huge, so hopefully it'll be okay for me to, as my first one. Now, my sort of delay on starting this one was around the fabric. So if you can see on here, so the, the sample is stitched on this beautiful pinky fabric, but Beautiful as it is, and it's actually available, this fabric, from a UK supplier, so that would be easy for me to get hold of. But I was worried that some of the pinky bits, there's actually some beads and things on here that I, and bubbles that I thought might get a little bit lost on that pinky, and I wasn't sure, and yes, I know I love pink, but I somehow still thought that I would prefer something kind of bluey, maybe. I wanted that undersea look, I guess, really. But I was really unconfident about where to go, how to pick something. I was really worried I'd order something and then I wouldn't like it. So I found this absolutely fantastic site. So in the UK, there's a um, uh, company called Chromatic Alchemy and they have a design and fabric viewer. So you need to create an account. But if you go on the Chromatic Alchemy website, you can use the design and fabric viewer make an account and you can then pick from a number of designers, obviously it's not everything, but it tends to be ones like the Bella Filipinas, the Mirabilias, that people like to do on kind of fancy fabrics. You can pick the designer, you can pick the specific chart, so I could go and pick Bella Filipina and pick the Rossa one, and then you can choose from loads of different fabrics from suppliers all around the world, so you can look at USA ones or I could just look at the UK ones so that I could get something that um, was local to me. And you can, it does a mock-up for you of what the design will look like on the fabric. Obviously it's a mock-up, but oh my goodness, it's so, so helpful. I did spend quite a bit of time on there just trying all the different fabrics. It's still hard because there's a lot of good options. But I did finally pick one. And although Chromatic Alchemy is not the only um, hand-dyed fabric supplier in the UK that's on there, it was a Chromatic Alchemy fabric that I ended up picking. And I actually have a little video to show you of me opening it. I'm going to show you the fabric again, right here as well. But here's a little video of me opening the fabric and seeing it for the first time. So this is my very exciting parcel. This is the fabric that I've ordered for the Bella Filipina design. And I haven't looked at this yet, so I thought we'd open it together. Let's have a look. All I've done so far is just undo the sellotape. I haven't looked at the fabric. Let's see. So this is from Chromatic Alchemy. It's called Rain Stops Play and it's a 32 count even weave. Go. 
yes, the rustling noise is kind of inevitable. Oh, it does look rather beautiful, doesn't it? Look at that. Some very lovely colouring on there. I'm gonna open it all out. I know you can't see all of it, but let's just move it around a bit and have a look. Look at that. It's got sort of water splash bits on it. Really soft colours. That is absolutely beautiful. Let's see, is it similar? Okay, it's similar on the other side. I've got, again, some slightly darker patches. Let's have a compare. Yeah, I think it's maybe just the end. There's a bit more pink at this end compared with this end. So I guess I can have a play around. This is bigger than I need for the design. So I should be able to work out whereabouts I want to put it. But yeah, overall, super happy with that. And look, they overlock the edges for you, which, as I said, I'm not going to need the entire piece. So I will probably still have to cut it, but that is, it's a nice feature for when companies overlock the edges for you, I do think. Okay, well, I guess the next thing will be to do, to put the threads on this when they arrive and see how they're going to look. So I think you can tell I was quite excited by the fabric choice and I think it's going to work really well. And I've got it here again for you so that you can see, can you see that beautiful, beautiful fabric? If I turn it that way around as well, you can see, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm really happy with it. Now, obviously it's a little bit different across the piece and this piece is way bigger than I need. So I could choose the bit that I want and I've actually marked now. Let me see, I've just marked, I don't know if it's focusing on that now. I've marked a little T at the top because that's, I'm going to use this top section here. So I'm going to use the whole piece as is. It is bigger than I need, but I'm basically going to stitch the mermaid on here and then the bottom section I can keep for something else. And yeah, so that's a 32 count even weave. And I will, I'll link Chromatic Alchemy um, in the description for you as well so that you can go and check them out and link through to the fabric viewer as well. So of course I have also ordered all the threads. Here's the threads. Got some beautiful pink colors in there so that's making me very happy and some lovely greens as well so yeah that's fantastic and I've got these so I use um, these floss drops these are Annie's keepers I get asked about these a lot so I will link those in the description as well um, and just on a binder ring and I've actually um, I've nobbled this binder ring was actually when I did the my previous heaven and earth designs I had three of this size binder ring and I've put one in here, which means the dragon project that I showed you has now got all the threads all on two binder rings. And it's a little bit crowded on there, so I've ordered some more so I can kind of spread them out a bit. Um, but this is totally fine number to have on, um, on a binder ring. It does work okay. So that's all DMC threads. And there is one, I don't know, I don't think that's, is that gonna find it for you? Beautiful, chronic. Um, metallic pink. So yeah, um, the chronic braids actually, as far as metallics go, it's not too bad to stitch with. So hopefully it'll be all right. And then the moment, as I say, it's got beads on it as well. So you can hear them all rattling around here. These are beads. Um, actually minus one, there is one missing. I realized the other day. So I bought this as a, a um, embellishment pack um, and this came from Arts and Designs. Again, it's a UK company and they are fantastic because they have these um, kits that they put together. They did the beads and the metallic thread, but I'm actually missing one. So I just need to get in touch with them and I'm sure they can sort me out with the um, bead pack that's missing there. Now, one thing I don't have for this mermaid project is don't have a particularly nice project bag again. I've just got one of the zipper pouches. So yeah, I feel like 
I feel like I could do with some nicer project bags. I've got a few, but I could really do with some more. So if you're in the UK and you know anyone who makes really beautiful project bags, please let me know in the comments. I would love to go and support them. And now all that's left to do really is for me just to kind of wrap up with the plans that I have for the next few weeks or so until I'm back with you again. And obviously I want to finish my Halloween pattern. And then I'm excited to do some other Halloween stitching from some other designers perhaps. And then it'll be Christmas stitching. So yeah, that's all coming around super fast. And I have to decide when I'm gonna dive in, start that dragon and mermaid projects. I think, I think the dragon's gonna get started first. And I, what I'd like to do is to have a nice free weekend so that I can really get into it and put lots of stitches in at the start. I think that would feel really satisfying. So I think in a fortnight's time, I might be able to do that. So yeah, I might have to hold on a little bit longer, but hopefully soon I'll be able to start that. And of course, then I will share that with you. And it also made me think about, well, I've actually got more whips at the moment than I think I ever have. It's still not loads by you know, some people's standards, but it is quite a lot. And I'm worried that when I get into starting the dragon, I will just want to stitch that and then the other ones won't really get any love. So I'd quite like to um, maybe for the first time, have some kind of, maybe not a rotation, but just what I stitch when, whether it's a weekday or a weekend or something like that. I'm gonna have a think about that and decide what I might do just to make sure that I do give lots of love to all my whips. And the final exciting thing that I will be doing, although I don't know if I will have done this by the time I speak to you next time, is that at the end of September, I'm going to be taking my Heaven and Earth designs to the framers. So I am very excited to, um, to take that one. I still haven't washed and pressed it yet. <laughs> I'm really gonna do that one. I'm just really scared about doing that. So uh, I definitely, I have a deadline though because framers at the end of September, so I've, I've got to get that done. Um, so yes, I will, I'll do that. Um, put my big girl pants on and get it washed and pressed uh, and ready to go and be framed. So that is all my updates. I hope I have not descended into too much of a hot sweaty mess during the course of this video. If I have, and I've just ended up super shiny by now, then um, yeah, I apologize. It's still really warm here in the UK and videoing somehow makes you really warm as well. So it's a bit toasty. Uh, I think I might go and have an iced coffee and cool down. But thank you so much for being here. I also want to say thank you to all my lovely new subscribers. Thank you to everybody who left me such wonderful comments on my video a couple of weeks ago with my heaven and earth designs. Thank you so much. It's been absolutely, it's been really, really lovely to read all your comments. So thank you very much for that. And I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you again next time. Bye for now. So the first project I have for you is, yes, it's my Christmas one in my Christmas project bag. And it's the Stitchy Friends by, Stitchy Friends? Christmas Friends. 